Yo, what's up guys? You've got Lightning here, coming back at you with another gameplay video. Uh, so we're playing a rally here, we're versing Jarvan in the top lane. Um, we've got Ivan in the jungle, uh, they have Rek'Sai. So, immediately that's quite interesting because uh, it tells me that I will probably want an early Ninja Tabai. Um, so in this lane versing Jarvan, I really don't want him to get the, the level 2 advantage, right? So I'm trying to push. Um, that's why I started Q. Normally I'd start E. Uh, ideally versus uh, like a melee matchup, but I started Q. I wanted to get that early shove on him, but um, it didn't really work out quite as the way the way I wanted. I wanted to try and push a bit, either push a bit harder or leave the minion wave sort of here and then push th this wave into the tower. Like uh, push this wave and then push my wave into the tower. This like this wave here. So um, ideally, what I wanted to do was yeah, yeah, kill all these so this goes into the tower. Then I get like a free base and just like. A uh, little bit of advantage. I don't really want to deal with his level two, um, but what ends, what ends up happening is that um, since I'm so pushed, I'm try. If I don't do anything to these minions before Rexai, I'm expecting Rexai up here, right? So I'm trying to like put, get rid of it. Uh, then Jarvan goes for that all in on me. Well, the level two uh, combo on me. He gets the Courage of Colossus, which sucks, but I fight him anyway. So we're both low, and I can see Ivan's, um, you know, going to get his blue, and he'll probably come up here very soon. I right, flash. The EQ combo, luckily, he gets the level 3 level up, which is a bit of a shame. I could have got like another auto worth of damage on him, but um, I know Ivan's on his way, so I'm trying to sort of keep this guy keep this guy hungry for a kill, right? So I just walk up to him and eat him straight away. Um, I made a mistake here, right? I'll just pause it. What I did is I leveled up my Q twice instead of leveling up my W. I meant to WQ this minion right here and kill it. Left it on 11 health and I didn't get my Q reset. Um... And that means that right now I can't I can't gap close to Jarvan. If I could gap close to Jarvan, we would have got the kill. But you'll see here we don't we don't get the kill on him. That's fine. So um, it's still a gank and it still it still gets some pressure on him, right? Because this early game, the early game versus Jarvan, I want to try and avoid it as much as possible because that's the only time I really lose versus Jarvan. So I really appreciate the Ivan gank, and I can see him. He, I can you know I was communicating with him in game, and he he's telling me he's going to come back. So. He ends up coming back top, so I'm trying to like bait the Jarvan into getting really hungry for the kill. Um, but I don't want to make it that obvious that uh, I'm getting some jungle assistance. <laughs> so it's a bit of a mind game really, but um, so Jarvan goes in here and misses his combo, right? So I go and Ivan shields me straight away and that's when we start fighting. Uh, it's a really close, he, he flashed and then he cancelled his auto or something, right? So I just take the opportunity to like Q into him and um, get the kill. So this gank right here, if you look at it right, we press tab. Uh, I got 19, 20 CS, Jarvan has 11. Um, he's used his TP, I still have mine. Ivan's going to help me shove this into his tower. Um, so ideally he's going to miss some minions if we go F3. We can see he's coming back to lane, but he's going to miss quite a few. Well, he'll probably miss the cannon, but he won't actually miss too much, to be honest with you. But look at the advantage, right? So I'm on 1700 gold. He's only just hit 1000 gold. So just off that one gank, if we look how the game's going right now, you can see that uh, obviously I'm ahead of the Jarvan, and he just got back to lane now. So the Jarvan just got back to lane, he missed the cannon, he's level 4, and his XP is like a quarter of the way, right? So uh, I'm TPing and I'm level 4, I'm almost level 5, so the XP advantage is quite significant right now, and my back compared to his, I got the Phage, he only got a longsword, right? So. I, I generally win any trade, so even though he got his EQ combo and Colossus on me, um, I was still able to win that trade right there, right? So, right now, all I have to do, since we both have no TP, is just keep the pressure up. Um, but what I do this game is, since uh, I wasn't too confident on killing him so early, um, I decided to sort of do some like minion wave management, and it, sort of, it really paid off, right? So, as you can see right now, um, the wave's pushing to me, right? Um, he needs to push this into tower. He really needs to push it into tower or he's fucked. So what he will try, what he did try and do was sort of use his E and his Q to sort of try and push the wave, but it wasn't, he couldn't push it fast enough. And at this point with his longsword back, you know, um, and my phage back, he wasn't able to um, really come up and contest the minions. So he backed, right? Yeah, he backed and he got a uh, rejuve bead and a boots. Um, good on him. But it still doesn't compare to my phage, right? So no, right now he's losing a whole wave. Okay, so he just lost 
basically a whole wave, and he's he's still coming back to lane. You can see he's still coming back to lane, just getting to his tower, right? So I'm a whole wave ahead. He's still he's level five, but I'm almost level six, right? So I'm almost a whole level ahead. And if you look at the gold, uh, 2300 to 1300, so I'm a thousand ahead already, just just from um, minion management, wave management. And the lane's still pushing in, so he's almost missed two. Where is he? I oh, must have. I wonder if he did a camp or something. I don't know. So as he comes back to lane straight away, I go on him. I did miss my Q. I that was a mistake on my part. But if I did get that Q, I would have tried to Q auto him again to chunk him a bit more. I really what I want him to do is come back straight back to lane, use all of his uh, corrupting potion stacks, um, and then and then. So he's got no sustain after that, right? So, and then just keep poking him away, uh, getting getting a combo on him, and then um, making him back off. See how he has to use his Q and his E to to push the wave, right? To farm the wave. Um, that's just costing him so dearly his mana pool and also his health pool because when he uses E or his Q and I have an opportunity to go on him, he's got no escape. Remember, if he he needs E and Q to get away. So if he uses either one of those abilities to farm the wave, to try and push the wave in right, I, I can go on him straight away. He uses E just then and I go on him straight away. Because what's he going to do? If he Qs me, whoop de do it's a little bit of damage, but he can't he can't proc his Colossus. Remember, the only way that Jarvan can proc his Carriage of Colossus, right, is, is if he hits an EQ combo. That's why if I play, <clears throat> if I play Jarvan jungle, uh, I never go Colossus. I just think it's, it's shit. Uh, so it's too conditional, right? That's why. That's also why people don't play Aurelia. Aurelia's E is too conditional. Like the person has to have higher health than you to get the stun. Whereas with Jarvan, you need two abilities to connect and then connect onto a person to actually get the the Courage Colossus, you know, um, shield. It's too conditional, right? So if I'm playing Jarvan, I'd much prefer like Thunderlords or um, Undying Grasp. Undying is it called? The one where you uh, gain health back if you. Um, auto attack them every four seconds or something like that. like that. That's probably better. Or even Thunderlords if you're going for like a full damage aggressive aggressive sort of build. Um, see right now, I've backed. So yeah, I got my Tabis right. Remember how I was saying like um, they have the Jarvan and the Rek'Sai. Um, then Twitch is also ADC. I can't change that unfortunately. But um, with the Twitch ADC, you know the three main AD threats. Uh, two of those threats are going to be um, potentially in my face early game like at this, this point of the game because the jungler and the top lane obviously so the early tabi basically helps with you know the survivability me taking less damage but also Jarvan's so far behind that he doesn't have the items to put damage out uh enough damage out to, to kill me right so that gives me the opportunity to further freeze this lane um i wasn't really focusing on uh trying to like use my tp to make plays in bot lane this game uh I, I probably should have. There was times where I probably could have got a good TP off, but um, I was more focusing on just taking the Jarvan out of the game because my my bot lane wasn't doing too badly. Like they did they did die, but um, yeah, that was just from a gank. So that's fine. At this point, I'm just focusing on uh, getting this Jarvan uh, as weak as possible, trying to take him out of the game. Didn't get my Curie set when I went in for the combo there. Um, but again, um, the wave's pushing to me still, uh, is it? Uh, I think I broke the freeze now, okay, so since I broke the freeze, I push it straight into the tower. So what's he doing? He's just sitting there. He's all healed up and stuff, right? So I push it straight into the tower. Um, it gives him, it does give him some CS, but it also keeps the pressure on him. And rexai has got to make decisions, right? He's got to make a decision. Uh, do I come top and help the Jarvan? Uh, or do I put pressure on the map elsewhere? But Ivan's doing a really, really good job of like invading Rek'Sai, as you can see. He killed him there. Nice job. So yeah, so yeah, like the, even the jungle matchup is so he's so far behind. Oh, he's already 400 behind, right? So since Ivan's doing a really good job in the jungle, it just gives me the freedom to do whatever I want with the Jarvan. And if Rek'Sai does come top, they're not going to be able to kill me because Jarvan doesn't have enough damage right now, um, and I'm too far ahead. And the Rek'Sai. And he's only got his one item at 10 minutes. He's level he's level 6 to my level 8, you know. Uh, he's, he doesn't have enough items. Because I got the Tabi, you know, that helps me out a lot. So if they, if I do get ganked, I don't think I'll die. See, what we'd, what we'd, look, what we'd take just now, right? Uh, Ivan managed to kill Rek'Sai, take his Wraiths. Uh, we just took his red. And now Ivan's going to take his 
take his golem. So that's half of his jungle gone, just just from that death. Puts him so far behind. And now we're looking for a gank on Jarvan to see if he comes and misses that. So we don't, we don't, after he misses that, we don't try and pursue it or anything. We just accept that he missed it and then move on. The wave's pushing back to me again because I rebounded off his tower, right? So, and then he used his abilities to farm that wave, so it pushed it a bit too fast. So, now it's pushing back to me. Take another look at the CS, right? So, 95 to 45. That's a 50 CS lead. That's, that's quite insane. That's, that's, yeah, it just means he's conceded the lane already. Well, he conceded it a long time ago after that first gank. And that one gank, you know, has snowballed a 50 CS lead. Um, which is so huge, man. Like, if, if you lose by 50 CS in, like, the, any, any lane, um, the other person's going to be so far ahead. They're going to get their item spike so, so much faster than you. And then, once they get it, they can potentially, you know, get more kills and, and more towers and snowball the game even harder. So, if you find yourself in a position where you're that far behind in CS, or that far in front in CS, for example, um, you get your item power spikes, like, so much faster, and then... And then you're able to snowball the game that much harder, right? So, I'm still just denying the Jarvan, right? So, he's still on 45 CS. Where is he, actually? Coming back to lane. He must have backed. What did he back? He got his tier mat. Okay, so he got his tier mat, which gives him a bit of wave clear. And, um, but he loses and he, he won't be able to freeze the lane or anything like that. See, look, he uses his Q to um, try and farm that, from that little bit of CS right there. And then I go straight on him. And get all that damage on him. So now he's forced to back, right? Go back to the fog of war. <clears throat> but I want to back as well. I think I forced, uh, push this in. Because see, my team's going for the dragon. So since they're going for the dragon, I try and pressure top to, to give the enemy, um, give them decisions to make. Um, if they make the wrong one, which it would be coming top, then, um, they lose more pressure on the dragon. Jarvan does TP bot, and I can see that right now. Um, so that's why I'm just continuing to push this in. The reason why I don't TP in there is just simply because I got no mana. Uh, I don't think I'd be able to do anything with no mana. And I just keep pushing this in. So ideally I want to get the tower right. So uh, my team loses the fight quite hard. Notice the dragon is still there. And I, even, I think he goes down here. Uh, Vega is there. Twitch is there too. Syndra uses her barrier right. So she goes down. Ivan, Ivan lives. She flashes away. So, all in all, they, they sort of lost the team fight. But what it did, it gave me a lot of time to just get that tower. Holy shit. Oh my god. <laughs> Go, Ivan. Fucking god, man. The Ivan god. Yeah, so even though Twitch goes down, <laughs> they they live. But I still get the tower, right? So, if you look at the, the gold now, um, we're at 2.8. He's at... Um, sorry, 5.6, he's at 3.1. 2,500 gold, right? So, 2,500 gold up on my laner at 14 minutes, 15 minutes. That's so huge. That's almost a full item, right? So, I've got my... Do I have my tri tri Triforce and Ninja Tabai at this point, right? So, I'll be looking to go into a Titanic Hydra straight after this. That's what the Longsword's for. We'll get the Tiamat, and then we'll go into a Titanic Hydra. And what that does, it gives me a lot of survivability against all the AD champions because of the Ninja Tabai. And all that health, uh, you know, contributes towards helping me against the Vagar burst if I do get bursted. And also, um, remember, health scales with, with resist. So it's, you know, a lot, all that extra health comes with um, 30 major resist, uh, sorry, 30 armor as well. So it gives me a lot of survivability. And you'll see, you'll see why I go in for that build. Like, it just gives me a lot of um, abilities to, or a lot of potential to frontline and soak damage and, and be, be, do the role that I need to do for the team. So since I've got his tower, uh, and basically taken him out of the game with his 52 CS at 15 minutes, <laughs> um, I start roaming. The enemy team uh, face-checked the bush and got absolutely fucking demolished by my bot lane. So that's pretty good, I didn't really need a help there. I was I was trying to work out if they were knew I was there or not, but they, I guess they didn't. Did they even know? Nah, they, they didn't ever water it at all, so... Um, that was just purely their mistake, going, going and watering that bush. But then I go straight back to the mid lane because I saw that uh, our Sidra died. And just defend that tower. Don't want to give them any position to um, get any gold. So Ivan's top, clearing top. Uh, we want to get the dragon. I thought that Ivan, is he still... It took a while to clear that CS, but that's okay. I thought he would have just sort of cleared this as much CS as he could then come for dragon, but... 
that's fine. They're not really in a position to to take this dragon away from us. I, Ivan was telling us, oh yeah, I'm not there, I'm not there. Well, probably should have been there. It was quite an obvious uh, objective choice to make at that point. So, uh, we get that anyway. Uh, I put a little bit of damage on the Vega here. Get his ghost. Uh, some I don't know why he ghosted, but he ghosted and we get his ghost for free. So, that's good. It's just one more summon of that they don't have. I just want to try and put as much pressure on the mid lane as possible. I think I, I, think I go back to top here. Because I push, I will push it in. Uh, Vega's going to wave clear that, so I can't really do much. Always try and get rid of the Rek'Sai tunnels whenever you can. Because what they do, they just they just increase his mobility around his own jungle, or around the map in general. You can just go through them from camp to camp. And then, you know, he, he can get from one side of the, uh, like, the jungle to the other quite fast. And I'm just putting more pressure on the Jarvan. I actually fucked up my, my, my Q reset again. I've had really bad Q resets this game. I don't know why, but I just... I, I kept missing them. I don't know why. It doesn't normally happen. Normally I'm pretty good with my, my Q resets, but... I've really messed up, messed them up this game. And Jarvan misses EQ combo somehow, but... That's alright. And I just keep pushing this top lane for now. Ideally, I wanted to push it in, but I didn't get that opportunity. Um, at this point right here, I saw the Vega coming up to me. So that's 2v1 in the top lane, which gives my team the opportunity to fight as with an advantage down here. It looks like the, they're making a good catch here with the, the Ivan. And then followed by the rest of the team, you can see Syndra's coming as well. At this point, Jarvan TPs, and at this point I see him, right? I see him, so I stay. I decide to stay here. Because my team had already killed Nami, gone onto Twitch, taken him out of the fight. And then, basically, it's 2v4 after that. And I've still got Vega up here, right? So I'm free to just, just stay on the top lane for now. And keep Vega up here. He doesn't have TP. He's got Ghost and Flash, so... Since my team won the fight before the Jarvan was even able to TP, really, um... It meant I didn't have to really TP. I could just stay up here and pressure this even more. Because then my team gets mid tower. I use my ult to clear the wave. Uh, ideally, you don't want to use your ult to clear waves as a rally anymore. Uh, the ult cost, uh, the ult cooldown got increased by quite a bit, um, like last season or something. Um, you used to be able to just use your ult to clear the wave and then bugger off and then and then come back to late and your ult will almost be back up. But you can't really do that anymore, especially in the early stages of the game. Although, in this situation here, since my team was pressuring this so hard, um, and they got two mid towers, I was able to just get this on the side. So we just got three towers, one a fight, and by this point we're so far ahead. Uh, what are we? So I'm 7.7, .7, Jarvan's 4.6, so I'm, that's 3k, 3k ahead. And that's all from, you know, I don't, I'm not, I don't have heaps of kills, um, all I'm doing is out CSing him, and he, he's 190 CS behind. Um, he's got a kill and two assists, so in that in that regard, he's doing better than me. But I do have five towers in my, under my belt, right? I did get first first blood tower here, so we got like 650 gold from there, or uh, is it 500 plus the 150? I can't remember exact numbers, but um, we got that gold and then four other towers. One, two, three, four towers, right? So that's all just tower gold, right? All that 3k is basically tower gold. And, and CS, and CS. So th that CS there, being 100 CS up, accounts for about almost almost 3k, I think. So, well, it can't be 3k, because I'm 3k ahead. Must be like 2k and then 1k for towers or something like that. I don't know the exact numbers, but if I didn't know them, I'd, I'd, um, <coughs> I'd, I'd, I'd be able to calculate it a bit better. But um, that's fine. All, so we know we're so far ahead just simply by looking at the CS, right, and the, and just knowing that we've got five towers, and they don't have any, uh, yeah, they got zero towers, right? So let's see, let's check out what I'm doing. I'm down bot. I think we're chasing Twitch. Yeah. See this fight? I was trying to queue over to the Vega, but I got stunned by his E, unfortunately. Missed my curie set again. Man, I'm so shit at curie setting this game. What the fuck's going on? So after that, I TP back top. Instead of instead of pushing with my team, um, trying to pressure this tower, I did TP back up top to clear this. I don't, I just didn't want Jarvan to get any gold really. Um, and I knew my team could sort of 
manage down here, and I was I was going to ping them back where possible. I did, I think I typed in chat Jarvan backed or something. So they knew Jarvan had backed, and I think they do end up backing off. They've got a weird sort of combination. Syndra's, Syndra's in mid lane, and then these three guys were here pressuring this. But then since I pushed top so hard, they all go, they all transition to mid. At least they all transition together, right? So Syndra initiated the mid, the mid push, and then the team transitioned around um, to match my push over here. And I thought they were going to back off, so I go to get the red buff. I, I should have, I should be here right now. I should be here. And that's a mistake on my part. That's just macro gameplay, right? Like, I should be, I should have pres pressured that harder to, to make them all come. And then these guys, that gives them an open tower. Right here, um, I'm just being an idiot. And I'm, I thought Rek'Sai was going to come up this way um, to come behind. So I'm just waiting there, standing still to try and wait for him. But he didn't. He came back to base. Got some good damage on the Jarvan. We'll see how this fight plays out, because it does play out. It's a really strange fight. Like, some MF gets stunned here, and then Vega um, ults her, and she flashes. So that's quite funny. So we're already down an ADC. But since we're so far ahead, I had to jump straight on the Nami, just to, just to delete her from the game, right? And I'm, I'm out of mana, so ideally, we don't really want to even fight this anymore. We want to back off. But everyone just keeps fighting. Missed my Q reset yet again really bad at Q resets today. I'm not normally this bad. I'm normally really good at Q resets. Um, I don't normally miss. But um, <laughs> right now I'm not really doing a very good job. Not a very good uh, example. Uh, Karma gets a really good mantra, mantra E off. Um, so I go straight on the Twitch, get another auto on the Rek'Sai, get a free double kill. Absolutely for free. Um, that, that gives us free damage on the tower. So we, we can just push this. Though I do help the um, Ivan kill the uh, Jarvan. I'm just waiting for enough mana for my Q. I think I have it now. Yeah, there we go. So then we can get this tower. So by 23 minutes, we've got six towers. I think we get the him here. I do tell them to back off and buy. I was going to clear this top wave here, and then um, just so it can push in and then back, because I have how much gold do I have? I got 2.8. So I wanted to finish my Titanic Hydra, and then start to buy another item. Uh, so yeah, they get the inhib, um, and then they back off. So at this point. We're so far, we're so far hiding gold, right? Where you can see we're 12k ahead. Um, so this game, this game basically just needs closing out. That's that's the only thing. Um, other than that, it's basically a home run. But so you can see how, even though I didn't TP into fights and stuff like that, um, Jarvan still he's 110, he's 110 CS behind, man. At 24 minutes, like that's absolutely crazy. That's so much gold. And even though I've I've got five kills now, so how far ahead am I now? 10, 11k to 6k, like 5k ahead, man. <laughs> like, that's so that's so bad. But he just got zoned so hard, and then I pushed at the right times to get that tower, even though he did TP bot or whatever, and then try and um, you know use the numbers advantage game uh, to try and win that fight. It didn't really pay off. Um, so with my build. I just want to point out that I've gone for Titanic, then Locket straight after. This Locket, Locket of the Onsalari is um, a build that a lot of Aurelia players are building now. Even before the um, before it got changed, they were building it a lot too. Um, just because it's such a cheap item, and the base. Look at the stats it gives you. It gives you 30 armor and 60 magic resist. So if you add on your 30 armor from your Ninja Tabo, that's you got 60 armor and 60 magic resist, along with all this health. Okay, so you got the health from the the Titanic and the health from the Trinity Force that gives you an extra 700 health and then what a lot of players will do after this they'll build a black cleaver um, especially if you don't have um, like a black cleaver champion on your team um, if you've got like a Lucian or something you probably don't need it but um, if, you, if you've if you got like a crit ADC like um, for example I've got MF she normally builds black cleaver oh she didn't build it she's building like full bloody um, lethality because um, with black cleaver and Titanic Hydra the splash the splash from Titanic um, can get the Black Cleaver stacks onto a lot of their team pretty quickly. See how it's splashing? So you can get the Black Cleaver armor shred on, on a lot of their team pretty quickly in a fight. Especially with your ult as well. Um, since, you know, it's all AoE, right? So that's the idea behind it. And it gives you more health. So the new locket, the way it's based is now it gives um, the shields based off your max health or bonus health. I can't remember which one it was. Um... But the more health you get, the bigger the shield gets. And you have you have to have quite a bit of health for the shield to be really effective. But the item in itself, with the resistances, 
is still is still really good, right? So if you if you shield sort of two or more people, uh, the item is worth. Uh, I don't really get to shot off this game because I think there's only one situation where I really use it. Um, but it's just a good it's a good it's good resists to complement all the health you've built. And then in, in your runes you can run like health per level and like an AP matchup or something like that, and then give that'll give you even more health. But with the cleaver that gives you uh, I think it adds up to like 1100 health. Um, that's bonus health, right? So at that point your shield you know will shield for a good 500 or 600 almost at late game. Um, which is almost as much as the old locket uh, base base heal. So it's still pretty good. Uh, it's a nerf for supports, I think, and a buff for sort of tanks or like you know top laners that might build it. So I TP into this fight here. I do use my locket, um, but that just kept all that did would just sort of it just kept me at full health. I didn't really get to use it very effectively, but um, no matter. I wasn't really in a position to use it because I was right in the front line. I, I, I basically dove the back line, right? So um, while my team were killing, uh, like their team, like they took care of the Jarvan, you know, I, I took care of the Twitch, uh, went on to Vega, I got him out of the fight. So a bit of a free game. Uh, after after we got to the point where I killed the Jarvan, um, from that Ivan gank, that Ivan, he played like so well this game, like, uh, what's his name? Volleybear, but like yeah, total, total credit to you. You played a good game, so clean as you were saying in the comments. Like the top gank, uh, followed by the invading and then um, the counter jungling, and then helping the bot lane and stuff like that. Right. So after that first gank, denying Jarvan all that CS. See in the end, um, you know, 130 CS up basically, which is so much gold. <laughs> it's such a big CS deficit. It's, it's just insane. And even though he was TP trying to make plays, he couldn't really do anything and like I, I didn't I got all my kills later in the game right I'd only had one kill uh, up until sort of mid game before I started getting involved with the team um, so basically all the gold that I was ahead by all came from towers and wave management and that's the power of wave management if you can get ahead in the lane and zone your laner out to the point where he can't come up to the wave to CS uh, if he's so behind that he can't make plays around the map and, and snowball the rest of the map then he's just in, he's in, what does he do? He's in the worst position ever. He has to try and roam with his jungler to do something else. But if, if our jungler's there to, to answer that, and he's so far behind, he can't really impact the game too much. And we saw that in this game when they went for the fight and he TP'd late and the Vega was still top. And then by the time he TP'd, the fight was already over. So it puts them in a really bad situation where they've got to make quick decisions you know, hard decisions because they have to. They're in a position where they can't see us. They're losing the lane. Uh, I'm gonna keep getting stronger, and if they don't do something, um, the game's gonna be over. Uh, so it puts them in a really sticky situation, right? So I just wanted to show that video off to so you know show the power of sort of wave management and manipulation of the wave, and how to just zone your your laner out to the point where uh, you basically remove them from the game. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. If you liked it, give it a like. If you want more content like this, uh, be sure to subscribe. And hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Yeah. Yeah.